you had uh, Yellen go before the uh, uh, congressional uh, uh, hearing on uh, the economy and what they're doing. And, of course, she was you know, able to drop uh, uh, hints about uh, negative interest rates. Attention hard asset investors, if you want to maximize your gold and silver holdings, consider owning businesses that own a massive amount of the metal, who will benefit the most as the world witnesses the mother of all gold rallies. With nearly 10 million ounces of gold resources through acquisition, this 50 cent stock has received a $2.65 price target from Cantor Fitzgerald. Learn more at crossthestreet.com slash gold 2016. Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I am Kenneth Amaduri, and we got a new guest today, and he's got a multi-decade-long history working in the markets. His name is Lee Goss, a 1974 graduate of Illinois State University who began his career working for the agricultural giant Cargill. And after two years with Cargill, Lee accepted a position as a grain merchandiser Dizer commodity broker, and from 1974 to 1983, Lee traded cash commodities, and in 1994, Lee co-founded International Futures Group, Inc., and today, International Futures Group services clients all around the world. So, Lee, thanks so much for coming on the show today. I got a lot of questions for you. The markets are crazy volatile, so thanks for coming on. Well, Ken, thanks for having me. It's quite an honor to be on your show, uh, and uh, I appreciate this opportunity and look forward to seeing if I can answer some questions. Absolutely. Lee, uh, you're a first-time guest on the show, so I'd like to start off by kind of getting your overall assessment on the current 2016 economy. Well, you know, I'm kind of different, I guess, than... Um, uh, the majority of people. I think uh, much like uh, Warren Buffett said uh, uh, yesterday or the day before that uh, he thinks, uh, and I agree with him, that the narrative on the economy uh, coming out of Washington, D.C. and the politicians is too negative, that the economy is not uh, as bad as uh, they would have you believe, that it is uh, recovering at a better rate than what perhaps uh, they're recognizing. And uh, that, you know, you know, if you just take a look, for instance, at uh, uh, the change in the price of uh, gasoline around the country and the uh, money that uh, the added money that's putting uh, that it is putting in the pocket of uh, uh, American citizens, I think that uh, um, we're doing uh, better than anticipated or better than being reported or better than be than than they're telling us we, we are. I agree with Warren Buffett on that totally. Okay, well, so, um, you know, central banks around the world are, are asking, a acting desperately. We saw some news from China that they're lowering the reserve requirements from their banks, which is an effort to, stimul to stimulate the economy. And we're, the reaction within the stock market has been pretty dramatic after the 25 basis point rate hike that we saw in December going into January. January was the worst start for markets uh, on record. And so, I mean, what are your thoughts on the, the stock market and what we've been seeing and, you know, the central bank intervention that has been going on around the world now for some time? And, you know, where, where is this all headed? Well, you know, that's... Uh uh, an interesting question. It, it kind of brings to mind my uh, favorite phrase uh, over the last three or four years, and that's consequences. Consequences uh, associated with a lot of the, the the decisions that these federal banks uh, uh, have made. If we go back, uh, if you will, to January, you mentioned January being. Um, one of the worst on record. If you go back to January, you know, what you had in uh, actually going back to December is you had the Fed raised uh, uh, the interest rate by uh, 
a quarter of a percent. That quarter of a percent raise, for some reason, just seemed to scare the bejeebers uh, out of the traders of the world. And uh, one of the impact uh, of that quarter percent raise was a uh, continued uh, escalation or continued pressure uh, on the stock market. Now, shortly uh, thereafter, let's I think it's about the middle of January, uh, what you had is you had uh, the president of the New York Fed uh, uh, in an interview, uh, basically say that, um, uh, you know, this impact uh, of the quarter percent raise had so negatively impacted the stock market and had so positively impacted the value of the dollar, pushing the dollar to values that were detrimental to the economy, that the Fed might have to reconsider what they're doing at their March meeting. And all of a sudden, you know, the market just, uh, the you know, the dollar just collapsed and uh, uh, the stock market market found a more solid footing. Uh, now, uh, about a week later, or three or four days later, you had uh, Yellen go before the uh, uh, congressional uh, uh, hearing on uh, the economy and what they're doing. And of course, she was you know, able to drop uh, uh, hints about uh, negative interest rates. And then when uh, asked directly about negative interest rates, she did uh, uh, confirm that uh, while they had not decided to use negative interest rates, the Fed had indeed uh, discussed negative interest rates, and that just kind of also added to the momentum of uh, uh, underpinning the stock market in a weaker dollar. Uh, now, if anybody out there believes that these two uh, comments were not uh, contrived uh, to work together to do exactly what uh, they did, which was to underpin the stock market, uh, or at least keep it from going a lot lower, I got, uh, I got some uh, beachfront property uh, in Colorado you can uh, take a look at. Uh, uh, they, you know, they came out with their statements. Uh, they sent the message. Uh, the traders of the world acknowledge having received them, and the stock market consequently has uh, uh, found more solid footing. Is it in an uptrend? Is it in a bull? Is is it the stock market bullish? No, it, it isn't. But it is not in the rapid decline that we saw uh, in January. So then you turn around and you take a look at the dollar, which at uh, one point during uh, uh, its downward move during all these comments, the dollar at one point was down over two complete points, is now fairly close to, to having rallied back to where it was when this whole stuff started. And so, you know, what you have is you got this, uh, uh, you know, you have a, a version of our federal bank, the Fed, coming out and uh, just by virtue of comments and uh, suggestions, uh, I don't want to say manipulating uh, the market. Uh, uh, I would rather say just basically uh, uh, help, helping direct the market into the direction in which they would like to see it go. So and, what does it say, though, when they try to raise interest rates and markets panic? I mean, how long can they have this low interest rate or even negative interest rate policy go on be before something else gives. I mean, the market seems to just be addicted to this easy money, low interest rate environment. So how long can this go on before they do have to raise interest rates and kind of pay the piper here? Well, I think that... Um, uh, Going, you know, if you quoting uh, or not quoting, but, but citing uh, one of my favorites, which is uh, Jimmy Rogers. He came out not too long ago and said the problem with uh, the federal banks around the world is that they're being ruled by academians and bureaucrats, and they don't really have a true sense of what's going on in the market, and uh, what they're doing is is more harmful than beneficial. And so, when will it all come to pass? You know, one of the things Jimmy said in that interview was that they're trying to determine the strength of the economy by the value of the stock market and that stock markets are made like all markets to go up and to go down and they're artificially underpinning the stock market uh, to, uh, to, to uh, give us the impression that uh, uh, that the economy is, 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 is doing okay and it's the wrong vehicle and you say when will it come to an end you know I don't know precisely when it'll come to an end obviously if I did I would probably be in uh, the Bahamas instead of Chicago but one of the things that we do know is that eventually markets exact a toll 
and that a toll will come and that we will see uh, the stock market uh, uh, retract to a point uh, where people will want to be a buyer without the benefit of an artificial stimulus. Where is that? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 again, I personally believe that the economy is doing better than what we're being led to believe, and I think that they're using the wrong tool to measure it. Market. I think if you take a look at some other indicators that are out there, um, uh, I, I think we're at a, a point in time coming off of the 2008 disaster where we're about ready to, to turn the corner with the degree of energy. Hmm. Um, this year should mark, I believe, the last year in which shadow inventory of foreclosed houses will hit the market. And once we kind of get through that, um, I think uh, we're going to be in very, very good shape. Uh, well, there's no I think question that the stock market has become something the government and the economy has been addicted to going up. And, you know, I, I actually don't have the facts right in front of me, but um, I know that every move down the stock market does. I mean, the government loses a lot more money in taxes than it did, let's say, in the 1920s when we had the, the Great Depression. I mean, the the way it's set up now for each you know, point or, or whatever it is that the stock market goes down, uh, there's a, a great deal of loss that happens in terms of taxes. Uh, and so I, I do know that they are very dependent on a rising stock market, and we've seen them go to great extents to support it. And even today, we're, we're doing this interview on Super Tuesday and just watching you know Trump take the lead for the Republicans and Hillary in the lead for Democrats. I mean, we know that Janet Yellen is a Democrat, and I, I'm almost wondering the extent that the Fed will go to stabilize these markets for the sake of Democrat credibility uh, going up until the election here. Well, you know, I would assume that uh, uh, the chances of that happening are very, very good. Uh, it is not uncommon for the Federal Reserve uh, to take uh, or to issue uh, uh, a policy that is beneficial to the incumbent uh, coming into or the party coming into an election. Uh, the, uh, the ones that uh, didn't benefit from it in my memory were uh, uh, George Bush number one uh, when Greenspan kind of uh, um, it took a, an opposite approach to it even after uh, Bush number one reappointed him uh, and Bush number one even made his statement to the extent that he was so surprised that what Greenspan did uh, uh, that, that he was shocked that he would do it uh, going into an election and then of course the other one would have been uh, uh, McCain uh, in uh, two you know in, when he ran and of course at that point in time there was nothing the Fed could do to, to salvage that it was such a mess uh, but you know are they going to do it sure they're going to do it it's common for them to do it uh, I think they will do it uh, the problem I think that uh, the Republicans have is that uh, Depending upon, I mean, if Donald Trump is going to be your candidate of the Republican Party or if Cruz is the, the, the candidate of the Republican Party, I don't think the Fed's going to have to do anything to boots of the economy. I think that uh, uh, the Republican Party winning with either one of those heading the ticket is slim to none. Uh, the, the, the one candidate, well, I don't, this is just my opinion. I've read more about it today in some of the publications. Uh, the governor of Ohio, I think he pronounces it Kasich, uh, he could be a real problem for the Democrats. Uh, uh, he's uh, uh, certainly hanging in there, and uh, uh, there's a lot of talk that he could be, uh, he could be the candidate, uh, especially if, it, uh, if nobody comes into the convention with a majority. So, you know, who knows? I, I do expect it to happen. It's something that has been pretty consistent historically. Um, uh, I just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm too old 
I guess I'm too jaded, but uh, push comes to shove. Uh, I just don't see it uh, having a great deal of meaning one way or the other. Uh, I think people recognize that it's manipulation for the benefit of a party or some, you know, a candidate. Lee, let's talk about precious metals and, you know, what are your thoughts? I mean, I think we can agree at least these markets are somewhat volatile. Um, what are your thoughts for precious metals? We've seen an uptick, especially in gold. And where has this uptick been derived from somewhat of a safe haven aspect or, or just plain old fundamentals? Well, I think it's been a combination, actually. It, you know, there is a safe haven uh, uh, part to it. Uh, when you're talking about, your, you know, the Euro Bank talking about negative interest rates and Japan at negative interest rates and you're talking about, you know, the Fed having discussed negative interest rates. Uh, these are things that uh, will cause people to, to seek out a different uh, avenue. Uh, medium for their investment. Uh, when you see the stock market uh, being under pressure and having difficulty keeping, maintaining a, you know, serious rallies, you know, where is the money going to go to? So I think, yes, there is a degree of safe haven uh, involved uh, uh, in uh, the gold market uh, uh, right now. I think the other part of it is I think we have to take a look at value. I think that when uh, uh, gold got to, uh, we started to approach $1,000 an ounce, I think that there were people around the world that just l looked at gold as a decent buy just based upon value of $1,000 an ounce. Keeping in mind, it wasn't that long ago, gold was approaching $2,000 an ounce and you had some of the uh, uh, smart guys in the room, smartest guys in the room calling for gold to go as high as three thousand dollars, and all of a sudden, it's at a thousand bucks an ounce or near a thousand bucks an ounce. I think value uh, had a lot to lot to do with it. And you know, gold is going to, or excuse me, silver being a poor man's gold is is, is basically going to be uh, following the same path. I think when you got uh, uh, silver approaching ten and eleven dollars an ounce, it was viewed as good value, uh, and people seeking both investments and seeking both uh, or both investments and sales safety, uh, you know, looked at silver as an alternative. So those, I think it's a combination of the two uh, that's underpinning or give us this rally in the gold and silver markets. So Lee, you mentioned the dollar in our previous discussion a few minutes ago, and you were talking about how Fed policy is now weakening the dollar by them discussing negative interest rates and kind of not raising interest rates going forward or just discussions about that. What are your thoughts on what we will see as far as dollar strength, dollar weakness against other currencies here in 2016? Well, we'll probably see a lot of what we have you know, seen here in the past uh, six months or a year. I think that a lot of the policy decisions that the, that the Fed banks are making uh, or are coming up with are having, a, you know, are basically, they're, they're taking, making those policies or making those decisions with a, hoping for the direct impact of cheapening their currencies uh, to the world of exports. So I think that uh, what you're going to see is, add, no matter what the currency is, as it gets uh, to levels that, it, that, the, their, that the respective Fed governments believe are hurting their exports, I think you'll see policies or statements or programs or measures being introduced to uh, drive those currencies, uh, uh, whatever, whichever they may be, to lower levels uh, uh, to uh, maintain their export market. Uh, I mean, this is my opinion and nothing more than my opinion, but what we have done, you know, unintended consequences, what we have done with the quote-unquote uh, free floating currencies and the economic uh, situation that the world uh, has found itself in since 08 is we have found that the various uh, institutions, federal institutions around the world are not necessarily real happy about or real crazy about absolutely free floating currencies, that they're going to take measures 
choice uh, to uh, either, you know, uh, take, uh, move them lower or move them higher, depending on what the case may be. Uh, but mainly move them lower from higher levels to keep the exports uh, from happening. If you take a look, if you don't, if you remember not too long ago where the Swiss came out, the Swiss Federal Bank came out, the Bank of Switzerland came out and said it was going to, you know, basically peg uh, the, the value of the Swiss to keep uh, things stable with inside the nation. And then on one day, months and months, Months, months later came out and said well, they've, you know, they're going to quit doing that and we saw within uh, a millisecond uh, tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of dollars change hand as uh, unprecedented move, uh, an unprecedented move in the Swiss franc took place. So uh, what do I think is going to happen? I think the Fed banks, whether it's the, the Bank of J Japan, Bank of China, the Fed, the Euro Bank, the Bank of Switzerland, they're going to continue to manipulate or maneuver their policies to keep their currencies at levels where they think they need to be to uh, stimulate or at least protect their export markets. Lee, so in these volatile markets here, uncertain markets, what is your investment philosophy and how do you personally advantage the volatility and uncertainty in these markets? Well, that's a, uh, you know, that's uh, a a good question. Um, I think that, you know, if a person is looking at, you know, a, a more traditional uh, stock bond type of uh, investment strategy, uh, you know, you're better off just looking long term and uh, uh, not taking to heart uh, much of the short term machinations of the market. It'll drive you crazy. Uh, I think if a person is going to be taking a look at trading commodities, which is a much shorter term uh, type of instrument, uh, one, what one needs to basically concern themselves with is, and, and basically ask a question uh, every day is what, you know, might happen today, what, what unexpected event could happen today in terms of an announcement from any of the Fed banks that could impact what I'm doing. And, uh, uh once having done that, if they decide to trade the markets, risk management is of absolute importance, just so that you're not ending up standing in front of a very short-term runaway, runaway rail car. Uh, keep in mind what's happened in our markets uh, many times, in my opinion, uh, when these Fed banks, these federal bankers from around the world come out with their statements, with their, their, their policies, is that the market will react in a very violent manner, very volatile and violent manner. And then when the market has an opportunity to digest what has happened a day or two or three later, you will see, in my opinion, you will have seen, and in my opinion, will continue to see the market recover from that violent move and go back to at above or near levels from which they started to begin with. So do you think that we're going to be seeing new highs for the stock market here in 2016? Is that a, is that a reasonable uh, uh, assertion? I don't think so. I don't think we have to have a bad 2016. But I, I, I just don't, I don't believe that, I just don't get the feeling that we're going to see new highs. Can we rally from here? Yeah, I think we can rally and probably will rally from here to some extent. Will we go back into a long-term uptrend in 2016? Maybe in the second half of the year we'll do that. Do I think we'll make new highs in the stock market? No, I don't. Mm. I just don't think there's the energy out there uh, to get that done. I think there's too, there, there's too much uh, uncertainty in the marketplace. And when the market has uncertainty, especially when you're taking a look at an equity market, uh, the answer to that uncertainty isn't to buy more, uh, but the answer to that uncertainty is usually to buy less or not buy at all or get out. So I mean, and the markets are very uncertain, and that's one thing that I've learned. I mean, I don't think anyone was expecting oil to go from $100 a barrel down to thirty dollars a barrel and below mm -hmm. and it happened you know it happened and so you know I hear what you're saying you know it's just it's kinda hard to to predict but at the same time you know where we've been so accustomed to the market kinda 
having a correction and then going up that we kind mm-hmm. of forgot what it's like to see it go down lower lower and then uh, go really into a bear market here and i think that if it does happen will become a self-fulfilling prophecy because you know just like oil did i mean i i i really think the the situation i mean the reaction to what we saw in 2008 with excessive money printing and qe and ultra low interest rates i mean there's going to be a release of that energy in the near future and um it's you know i i it's hard to say what will exactly happen but i do believe that there will be an impact on our markets one day or another so Lee, I, I wanted to give you an opportunity here to just share some final thoughts before we uh, said goodbye. Obviously, let everyone know about what you guys do and offer at International Futures Group, and uh, just some final thoughts. Well, International Futures Group is a, a retail uh, commodity futures trading uh, company. We're located in Chicago. Uh, we have a number of um, uh, brokers, uh, all of them uh, very experienced. Uh, with uh, you know, probably specialty would be a good a good word. We all you know we all have kind of our specialty. Um, what we try to do is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, impart good, solid, uh, objective uh, information uh, and uh, service those accounts, uh, the commodity trading accounts. Uh, uh, at uh, you know a, at a competitive uh, uh, cost to the account while uh, providing uh, uh, you know superior service in our opinion and uh, we've been around uh, you know I've been uh, trading commodities now since 75 and my partner Tom has uh, been trading commodities for even uh, longer than that and Steve uh, slightly shorter than that and so you know we've got about a hundred years plus of total commodity trading experience among the three of us and you know our uh, uh, our uh, brokers that we have working for us here you know have similar type of experience so uh, well we just you know we, we we're not much of a uh, we don't high pressure people. We ask a question, we'll give you the answer that as we see it, best of our opinion, and try to service the people in a fair manner. Lee Goss, everyone of International Futures Group. Lee, thanks so much for coming on the show with me and sharing your thoughts on uh, the markets. Kenneth, I appreciate this opportunity, and while I sit here in cold, frigid, icy rain Chicago, you know, I'm very envious of your 79-degree California temperature. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks so much for coming on the show, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Have a great one. Bye-bye.